Okay, so after seeing Tan, the fruit nerd, um, and him sharing his beautiful dessert using glutinous rice and saltbush, I thought I'd take the flavor profile and the quality of saltbush and make a beautiful flavorsome crust using Marcel vegetable stock, loads of black pepper and some lemon. So first up, we're going to zest a lemon. Of course, capturing all those beautiful essential oils of the lemon itself. That's going to be the base of a crust we're going to make for a lamb backstrap. Now for the crust itself, we're going to use saltbush, so which is this puppy. This has been dried and ground into a fine powder, so carry loads of flavor. It's going to be fantastic for the lamb. So we'll pop that in there. But then to give it an even more of a kick, we've got the Marcel vegetable stock powder. Right, set that aside. With our lamb, I'm going to use some cherry tomatoes. Now, of course, you can serve these raw, make a nice little salad with some red onion and some torn herbs. But I'm going to roast these up. So I'm going to chuck these in the oven. And to give the sweetness a bit of a bolster, I'm going to use some awesome pomegranate molasses. So pop that into a little bit of a bowl. A drop of olive oil, good pinch of salt. We're going to roast it quite hard at 200 degrees. What's going to happen is that pomegranate molasses is going to kind of char up and, and, and caramelize. Also, we're going to take this lemon. We're going to roast this as well. So this is also going to caramelize. It's going to change the profile of the flavor, which we'll then use to cut through the richness of the lamb. 200 degrees for five minutes. Now, we talk about the lamb. So we're going to use some lamb backstrap. Very versatile, very easy to use. Like most proteins, we've taken this out of the fridge and we've allowed it to come up to room temperature. And really, we're just going to season this with some salt flakes. So it's already been trimmed for us. So, but if there's, a, obviously, if there's a little bit of sinew, just grab, grab a knife and just slice that off. Drop of olive oil in the pan, and the lamb will pop into the pan. We're just going to sort of gently color that, and we'll roll it for, for just a couple of minutes. We'll give it a, a little bit of color. Now, I don't want to put too much color on the lamb. It's delicate, it's going to be tender. There's not much fat flowing through it, and there's not a fat cap to protect it. So I don't want to dry it out. So as you can see, like, there's a little bit of color there. Um, on the lamb starting to appear. That's kind of what you want. You don't want it any, any darker than that, really. All right, so we've browned the lamb. That's what you're after. And then we're just going to finish our saltbush crust. So olive oil both sides, sort of brush it all over because this is going to allow our crust to stick to the lamb itself. Give it a little bit of a mix. So we've got our lemon zest in there, the Marcel vegetable stock powder, of course, that umami hit with the saltbush. So obviously, like, if you can't get your hands on saltbush, like, it's pretty readily available now. You can buy it online. Same the other side. I'll just check on the Tommies. So they don't look like they're doing much at the moment, but these are going to go back in with the lamb itself. So we'll carry that over to our, our roasting tray. Pop it on top. So pop this into the oven. The backstrap this size, I think, is going to take about six to eight minutes. Obviously, a, a little longer if you want it medium well. So the lamb's at about, about six minutes now. So we'll just have a look and see what she's like. Just give it a little push and it's, you can, as you can see, it's springing back nicely. So really barely any cooking. But I'm going to rest this up onto a plate. Of course, we'll take some foil. So I want to rest this for about four or five minutes to retain all of its juices and moisture. So it's going to be beautiful, succulent, tender, delicious. But the tomatoes and the, and the lemon will pop back in the oven. Pop these back for about three or four minutes. Let them do their thing. All right, so I'll take out our Tommies and lemon. So you can smell that sort of pomegranate molasses. They, they smell beautiful. And so the skin's just starting to come away. They're blistered. They're just starting to burst. And you, can, you can sort of smell the caramelization as well. And I reckon the lamb's going to be pretty good now. So it's had a good sort of four or five minutes rested. You can see that kind of that, that beautiful crust. So I'm going to pop that on the board. I'm just going to stick any, any residual juice, these sort of pan juices, remnants of the rub itself, will pop back on the tray we're going to use all this and all the sort of caramelized molasses to sauce our lamb dish. And we're going to take our lamb, we're just going to cut him on the angle, and you can sort of see that crust on top, and that, that's all flavor. That's what you want. So it's beautiful and sort of blushing pink. So that's exactly what you're looking for. And you can arrange this to be as fancy as you like. I just like to put him to one side. And I'm going to grab our cherry tomatoes and just pick them from the stalk, and just arrange them on the side. And then so all these beautiful juices just wind that over our Tommy's and some on the lamb. And then really for a little salad, I've got some roasted pine nuts here, just for a little bit of, a bit of crunch, and then, and then some fresh herbs. 
And so there's our dish. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a taste. Grab some lamb. A bit of that sauce. Well, it's so good. So really, it's two sort of regular ingredients that we all know and love. Lamb and tomatoes and the umami of that salt bush makes it really exciting and interesting. And Nolly is absolutely right. Salt bush should be a household stable all over Australia.